Good evening to each of you. Will you turn your Bibles with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Certainly glad to have everyone back with us this evening. And especially our young people along with the chaperones. We're, we're glad that, that you are back. And from what we understand, everyone had a, a good trip. And on the schedule for the youth retreat, evening worship at 6 o'clock is a part of of the schedule. Now, I don't know if all of the parents and teens fully understand that, but usually about half of them stay for evening service and the other half go home. I, I suppose that those that go home possibly may fall asleep uh, on the way home, but uh, nonetheless, we are glad to have all of you that stayed and all of you that are with us this evening. You may recall this morning that we talked about all, being all alone on top of the mountain and I was able to see a couple of pictures from the Atlanta trip and it looked like several of the teenagers were on top of the mountain, not by themselves, but they were in a group and they were playing some crazy game ninja. I don't really understand all of the rationale or, or reasoning behind that game, but uh, it makes sense to some and I know they had uh, a wonderful time. And in conjunction with the youth retreat, the lessons that they focused on came out of the book of Philippians. They, from what I understand, had, I believe, four lessons. And tonight our sermon is designed to wrap all of those items up. And this is a, a, a sermon that's going to be based out of Philippians. Now, you didn't have to hear the, the four lessons from the youth retreat to be able to make sense of the sermon tonight. But we are attempting to connect with them coming back from Atlanta and also hopefully be an encouragement to each of us as we consider God's word. Paul writes this in Philippians chapter four, verse number 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, when we read these verses in Philippians chapter 4, and, and we're learning about Paul being content, and we're, we're learning about how we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, this verse is one that our young people learn to memorize from a, a very young age, and it's a verse that many of us have come to live by as Christians experiencing difficult life situations. And, and when you see this idea of being able to do all things uh, through Christ, I, I don't know exactly what comes to mind. I, I, I'm sure when you, you see these words or hear them preached from the pulpit, you, you probably start thinking about some difficulties that you are experiencing in life right now. It may have something to do with some type of family issue. It may have something to do with, with work. Maybe the job's not going exactly the way that you had planned. It may have something to do with, with someone who has upset you or offended you. And, and you're thinking, okay, I am a Christian. I am a strong person. And I know that I can get through all things, including whatever I'm dealing with right now. And I don't know exactly all that's going on, but we all have difficult life situations and we all can be reminded that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now we do know a little bit about the situation that Paul was thinking about and the situation that Paul was living through and experiencing himself. We know that Paul was a man of God who simply tried to do what was right, spreading the good news of 
Jesus Christ. And as Paul was trying to do those things, we understand that he experienced suffering. He experienced persecution. And it got to a point in which he was even arrested for his faith. Philippians being one of the four books in the New Testament that are known as the prison epistles, meaning that Paul is writing from prison, addressing those items that are very important for us when we experience difficult life circumstances. So Paul knew what difficult life circumstances were all about. And so he definitely has every ability and credential to teach us how we can learn to be content and to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now we're going to be looking at four specific ways that we can learn to be content and to do all things through Christ that strengthens us. But before we get to those strategies or, or those hints or those tips or ideas, we need to consider some for up front some typical barriers to contentment. Some things that, that get in our way, some distractions of contentment. First of all, when we think about contentment and, and those barriers to it, we understand that the first barrier is unrealistic expectations. Many people today are not content in their lives because they have expectations that just simply are not realistic. And we know that there are several uh, folks that have grown up in, in environments and, and many of you were uh, living as young children during the, the Great Dep Depression and, and you may recall how much sacrifice it took to simply be able to survive and knowing your parents worked hard and they saved everything that they possibly could. And after years and years and, and as the economy got a little bit better, the, your parents or grandparents figured out a way to overcome those items. But the younger people, the younger generation, they, we do not fully appreciate what it takes to work and to earn a living and to be able to provide. And so we want things very, very quickly. We want them immediately. And, and we don't know what it's like to save and to scrounge and to make sure we have our next meal. But instead, our expectation is that we are going to get what our parents or grandparents get that took them maybe 10, 20, 30 years. We want that by the end of the day. We want to be able to experience all of those blessings within just a small moment of time. That's unrealistic and we tend to grow discontent when we don't have as much as other folks do. Not understanding all of the work that it takes in order to get to that point. People tend to have unrealistic expectations when, when it comes to marriage. Some people get married and, and then determine or figure out that their spouse is not perfect. Sometimes people get a new job and, and it takes them a while to understand that their boss is not perfect. Sometimes there, there's the opportunity to, to make some friends and, and then you f quickly figure out that your friends are not perfect. And even when it comes to our church family, we tend to expect people to always be mindful of me and to never upset me in any way, shape, or form. And we often end up frustrated and not content because we expect everyone around us to be perfect and really that is never going to be the case. People are not always going to do the things that we want them to do. And if we have an expectation that other people are going to do exactly what we say all the time, we are never going to be content. And it's also an unrealistic expectation to try to control someone else. We, of course, can influence and, and try to assist and guide. But if our expectation is to control someone, and then they end up, end up doing something that we do not want them to do, then that will leave us very discontented and very frustrated. A second enemy of contentment, in addition to unrealistic expectations, 
is unfair comparisons. We're never going to be truly content in our lives if we continue to compare ourselves to other people. We may compare ourselves to what our sibling looks like, or we may compare ourselves to, to other folks in our class that may get better grades than we do. We may compare ourselves to our neighbors and, and, and understand that they have more and, and I don't have as much. Or we may just compare ourselves to other folks and always end up discontented because we are not more like them and, and their perceived level of happiness. But when we come to understand that we do not need to compare ourselves to anyone else, Rather, simply to try to grow and be more a reflection of Jesus Christ, always in a sense comparing ourselves to the Savior, knowing we are striving to become more complete, we are striving to become more like Him, knowing that He loves us, knowing that He died on the cross for us, and is able and willing to forgive us of our sins. And then a third barrier that often prevents us from being discontent, or for a barrier from uh, keeping us to be content, is what can be phrased as unnoticed blessings, following that, that phrase, that, that theme of using UN, unnoticed blessings. We tend to take for granted the things that are most important to us. The United States is one of the most blessed countries throughout the world. We have more possessions, more freedoms, more opportunities than anyone else. But by and large, for the most part, Americans are some of the most unhappiest people in the world. And it's because we forget of how blessed we are and we don't notice those things that are very important to us. We think about items that become uh, common to us until they are removed. Now it doesn't look like this tropical storm Debbie is going to come our way, unless of course one of the spaghetti models that seemed like there was about 20 of them uh, redirect uh, Debbie back to us. It doesn't look like this storm is going to affect us, but we really understand what it's like when a storm comes and we no longer have our air conditioning. And it gets very hot, and it's something that we realize that we are truly thankful for, even though, quite frankly, it is a luxury. It is something that we often take for granted. What about an automobile, or, or a cell phone, or a computer of some sort? We, we tend to take those things for granted, but we can become very discontent if we forget all of the blessings that we have been given in our lives. And so how is it knowing that there are some barriers and, and trying to stay away from that? What are some strategies or what are some ideas that we can do to make sure that we remain content and never become discouraged and always know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Turn your Bible, if you will, a few chapters back to Philippians chapter 1 as we're going to look at four very specific ways in which we can remain content and focus on overcoming difficult circumstances. I'm in Philippians chapter 1, verse number 19. Paul writes, for I know that this will turn out for my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit for my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. 
For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may, may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or in, am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. For to you it has been be granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict what you saw in me, and now here is in me. The first strategy to remain content and to always stay focused on doing all things through Christ is to understand that suffering is a reality. Suffering is something that we can be expecting. It's not an unrealistic expectation. In fact, it is something that not, we don't look forward to suffering when it comes, but we're not surprised when it comes our way. And, and that suffering can come and take the form of, of many ways. For Paul, it, of course, was, was being imprisoned and having to go eventually on trial before the Emperor Nero to tell what was going on and to defend what he was doing, and that was preaching and teaching the gospel of Christ. The text tells us here in Philippians 1 that, that Paul was hard-pressed on both sides, and, and he desired to be in heaven, which would be far better, but he knew that it would be beneficial for him to remain to encourage other folks and to remind us that suffering does not have to weigh us down but it's something that we can grow through and it's something that we can overcome. Now, don't be confused or leave the passage here in Philippians 1 thinking that Paul had some type of suicidal ideation. He, he was not desiring to do anything of the sort, but he was anticipating heaven, knowing how tough life had been, but still desiring to live in order to demonstrate his faith to others and to be able to worship God regardless of what circumstances had come his way. And so as you think about the, the difficulties you may be experiencing right now in your life, understand that it is a part of our existence. It is a part of this world. And you may have not done anything wrong in order to experience this suffering. In fact, Paul was doing everything right. And that resulted in him being in prison. But just know that it is something that is a part of our lives. And it's something that should not catch us off guard when it comes. So understanding that suffering is a reality of life, I believe will help us to be able to remain content and to always know for sure that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, as we look for a second strategy or a second idea in order to remain content. Scripture says in Philippians 2, verse number 5, Let this mind be in you which also was in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself 
and became obedient even to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We understand that suffering is a reality. And secondly, as we consider the example of Jesus Christ, we need to always remain submissive to our God. The idea of submitting to the Lord. This example of Jesus, we see that he was obedient to the Father, even to the point of death. And we know that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, whether it's before we die or at the judgment day. Now, hopefully, we all surrender at this point in our lives now and submit to the Lord through faith and obedience before judgment day occurs. But we, re we remain content, all of these things working together, we remain content when we submit to God. When we keep our faith, when, when things are coming and things are difficult and, and we're tempted to throw in the towel and just give up and say, you know, I, I cannot do all of these things anymore. I, I'm tired and, and I'm, I'm ready to just give up. We tend to stop doing those things that are right. We, we tend to stop praying or, or stop reading or, or stop obeying or, or to start living immorally or, or start living unrighteously. But see, contentment requires submission to God. And as we continue to submit, difficult life circumstances will get easier and easier. Moving right along to chapter 3. Picking up in verse number 7. Scripture says, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. But indeed I count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Now in verse number 8 of our text, I'm reading out of the New King James tonight, it, it talks about the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, but you may be reading from the New IV translation or, or some other uh, translation, and, and it'll say, for the surpassing greatness of Christ. And, and so how is it that we remain content and never to give up doing all things through Christ? We understand that suffering is a reality, that we are to continue to submit to our Lord. And we stay focused on number three, the surpassing greatness of Jesus Christ. This surpassing greatness that is bigger and better than any life circumstance. And it's this surpassing greatness, this excellent that even if life is going exactly the way that we want, everyone is doing what we want, life could not be better. It still would be, it would fail in comparison to the greatness of Christ. Paul goes on in this chapter as he's elaborating upon this surpassing greatness and he starts talking about forgetting what is behind and pressing forward 
toward the goal and our, knowing that our eternal citizenship is in heaven. You see, we remain content focusing on this surpassing greatness to know that heaven is better than this world. And we are able to overcome difficulties knowing that we have something bigger and better ahead. This excellence of Jesus provides for us something great and it's eternity in God, with God, in heaven. Fourth and finally, as we look at chapter four, beginning in verse number six. Scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. You're probably guessing ahead what the fourth point is. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. How is it that we can remain content we understand, first of all, that suffering is a reality. Secondly, that we continue to submit to Christ. Third, we look forward and, and experience the surpassing greatness of Jesus. And fourth and finally, we continue in supplication to God. In other words, we don't just pray when everything is going great, but we pray when things are going bad. We don't just pray when everyone is happy, but we pray when people are upset. We don't just pray when, when life couldn't get any better, but we even pray when it seems like life cannot get any worse. You see, prayer is, a, is an awesome opportunity that we have to speak directly to God through the mediation of Jesus Christ, who died for us, and is making intercession for us. And he is enabling us to be able to bring our petitions, our requests, our, our supplications before our God. And, and so as Paul was, I'm sure, contemplating his situation in prison, knowing this upcoming trial that he was waiting on, he was in prison for two years or more. I'm sure he spent many, many hours in prayer to God. And whatever your difficult life circumstance is, whatever it is that you would like to see different, hopefully we all continue to bring our supplications before our God. So as we close this evening looking again at Philippians 4, Paul says in verse 11, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. And he says in verse number 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Which one of these areas could you possibly improve on the most? You may think, be thinking, well, two or three of these I, I, I do pretty good and I understand, but, but maybe one or more of them is lacking. And, and, and maybe, hopefully, as you consider the work of, a fee, of Philippians, this wonderful book, we can remain focused and maybe it has the case that we, we used to do some of these things, but, but we've gotten away from them. Hopefully tonight we will recommit ourselves, understanding that suffering is a realistic expectation. That submitting to God is non-negotiable. That Jesus' surpassing greatness is much better than anything that we will ever experience in this life. And that our supplication or prayers to God really do help. And they really do make a difference. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Tonight we are singing a song of invitation, and if you're ready to become a Christian tonight, we hope that you do so by believing in Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins, confessing your faith, and being ready to be baptized into Christ, immersed into water for the remission of your sins. Or if you need to come back to the Lord to be restored, 
by repenting and praying to him. We ask that you do so tonight while we stand and while we sing together. <laughs> 